for Rock With, the show that combines rock music and quizzing without a hint of genetic modification. Please acknowledge three men with nothing in common except a love of music and a place in the witness protection program. In order of false identity, on drums, Rudy, two thumbs, Mariachi. On the bass guitar, Klaus Oppenheimer. that you better believe. Stop what you're doing and get up off your knees. It's your host, Julia Severo. Gentlemen, salutations from the Gershwin Room, the seventh wonder of the rock world. After CBGB's Graceland, the Manzil Room, Sun Studios, Tipitina's and Phil Spector's hair. <laughs> As always in charge of Rock Quiz quality control, the arbiter of all things arbitrary, please welcome Brian Lankervis. Thank you, Julia. And right at the top, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to clear up a mistake from last week's show. Uh, there was some confusion between an American singer and a West Indian disco group, mm -hmm. but I can tell you right now that Karen Carpenter's nickname was never Boney M. <laughs> Come on. Awkward. Ladies and gentlemen, if history has taught us anything, it's that a music quiz show is impossible without contestants. They tried it in fascist Italy and it failed. It failed in Cuba, communist China and at Channel 9. Let's not make the same mistake here tonight. Bring on the contestants and let's have a look at the pre-show showdown! Which Harry Potter book is also the name of a Van Morrison album? I'll go, uh, the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone, well done. <laughs> Got a touch of the Dumbledore yeah, about you yeah. too, haven't you? <laughs> Not in length, but in you. colour. Who was inspired by Brokeback Mountain to finally release an unheard song called Cowboys are frequently, secretly fond of each other? <laughs> Yes. Willie Nelson? You were going to say that, weren't you? <laughs> Give him a point. Astral Weeks. Yes. Ben Morrison. Deep Purple's greatest hits. Yes. Deep Purple. And you hit that buzzer <laughs> with such determination. Someday I'll have money. Money isn't easy to come by. By the time it's gone by, I'll be gone. Spectrum. <laughs> They're here. Welcome, one and all. And now, three women on the panel. I can't believe it. <laughs> hallelujah. I say hallelujah to you all. Now, Lulu, welcome. Thank Hello. you. Hi, Julia. Now, Lulu, what was the first concert you ever went to as a young woman? Lou Reed at Festival Hall. Oh. Hello there. And Split Ends were the support act, if I remember. Oh. Oh, Lou Reed and Split Ends. <laughs> oh, you'd be beside yourself. Hmm. Probably for two dollars fifty. Probably about that. Probably yes. Oh gosh. And was Lou Reed amazing or just a bit strong? No, he was fantastic. Was he? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Now, Rosemary, what about you? What was the first concert you ever went to? Um, I think I'm embarrassed to say it was a Rod Stewart one. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Rod Stewart, Rose. I don't know if you heard pre, that. Pre-Brit was good. Pre-Brit, yes. Pre-Brit. Oh, she's got a women right. That's good. Did you hear there was another little... Yeah! So they like a bit of Rod. And where? Where did you see Rod? My Music Bowl. Oh, My Music Bowl. Lovely. Hello. Welcome to Fran. Hi, Julia. <laughs> now, Fran, what was the first concert you ever went to? Well, it was ACDC with Skyhooks and Sherbet at oh, Festival Hall. At Festival Hall, no less. Oh. Mm. That, was a, that was a bit more than just a tennis clap out there, Fran. They're pretty impressed. And Brett, here you are, thorn amongst the roses. Now, Brett, uh, what was the first concert you ever went to? I think I can out-dag everyone with Chad Morgan and Slim Dusty at the Crook. <laughs> Crookshank Oval in Kalgoorlie. Slim Dusty, let 
captain. That's magnificent. He's... I was there for Chad, not Slim. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least he's honest. Our contestants will only take us so far for a fully functioning, well-rounded team. We require an injection of expertise in the form of the singers waiting backstage at this very moment. Let's bring them out. Orchestra, the musical preamble, please. Can it be now? I was born in the United States to a Western Samoan mother and Native American Mexican father and moved to Melbourne when I was one. My heritage is a great influence on my music and I regularly mention artists like Fela Kuti, Janis Joplin and Ernest Ranglin as inspirations. I've been referred to as Australia's new queen of roots music, but I'll leave the royal name checks for my kingly band, a vibrant, colourful seven to nine piece. We're relative newcomers, forming in Byron Bay in 2003 and moving south in 2004. We got our big break when our debut single, Water, featured on Triple J's Home and Hosed LP. Hello. Um, Natalie Papa. Well done, you! Please make her very welcome, Natalie Papa! Cause there just is no denying May the world we live in now carry me today See our colors keep on flying Yeah, but come make your own line and use your own eyes to see what they do and they know it ain't right There ain't nothing wrong with us wanting to fight Yeah, come on There is a resistance that goes every day from following that Gonna give up the freedom, gonna stay home.
like the orgy of percussion. <laughs> I don't think we've had that much percussion on this stage, Natalie, welcome. Absolutely yeah. delightful to have you here. Pleasure to be here. Now, Natalie, having your song on YouTube, that must have really helped to getting a bit of interest overseas. Yeah, I think that's probably the main sort of thing that has um, happened. Yeah, we've had a lot of few different interesting things come up from overseas, which is great. And, you know, when it first happened, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I was like, oh, yeah, YouTube, whatever. And um, next thing I know, Sydney Morning Herald's on the phone. I'm going, oh, OK, this is serious. And so it was really good. It really, yeah, it's really picked up some overseas stuff. It's the marketing tool of the future. <laughs> now, out of interest, the first concert you ever went to? I was thinking about this, and I'm pretty sure it's... Uh, I went to see Midnight Oil at Woodford Folk Festival in 97, I think it was. Oh, Woodford Folk Festival, lovely. And the first album you ever bought? first album I ever bought was Janis Joplin album called Got Them Old Cosmic Blues Again Mama. I think there it was you go. Like... You can see where that might come from. Excellent. Ten points already on the board, Rosemary. Well done. You buzzed in very well there. Natalie's in position. Who will join the other team? Who can it be now? I was born in Alice Springs and did a lot of my growing up there. I started my music career in the way of many, playing songs for the family and performing at school concerts from the tender age of six. I switched from piano lessons to guitar once I heard Jimi Hendrix, Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page, and by the age of 14, I was in a band and already dreaming about a career in music, which happened for real. In 1973, when I hooked up with a wild Scotsman from Elizabeth, an infamous working-class suburb of Adelaide, we wanted to be as big as the Rolling Stones, and we certainly gathered no moss, as we became one of the hardest working and most loved live acts in Australia. Is it Ian Moss? Please make him very welcome. <laughs> from Paul Chisel, Ian Moss. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. We are well, well. Listen loud to the wind, babe. And listen loud to the rain. You know, I feel that water. I can feel that water licking at my feet again. And I don't want to see this town no more. Wasting my days on a factory floor. First thing you know, I'll be back in Bow River. Mm -hmm. the first thing you know, I'll be back in Bow River again. Yeah. So 
There's a towel down there if you need it. <laughs> no, because it's hot work up here, you know. You don't just get up here and go, oh, strum. They both work hard. Natalie worked hard and Ian's worked hard. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Ian, may I call you Mossy? Sure can. If you don't want to, I, I don't want to go, but I'm, you know, would you prefer Ian or Mossy? No, nah, Mossy's a bit more it's familiar. A bit more familiar, is that familiar, all right? Yeah, a bit more familiar, yeah. great, terrific. <laughs> now, uh, Mossy, um, what was it like growing up in Alice Springs? Isolated. Yes, in a word. So the first concert you ever went to, was that in Alice Springs? It was, yeah. You didn't get a lot of uh, acts coming through back in those days. Um, <laughs> but I think actually the first concert I saw, which made a strong impression, was Slim Dusty. There you go! He went to Slim as well. You've gone to Slim as well. Huh? Was Slim there with the whole family, doing a, a gig with the family? Was it just him, a man alone? No, no, it was with, with a band. I, I wouldn't know any of the band members, but it was in a, in a circus tent there behind the Natalie Gorry Kindergarten. Oh, uh, a... Natalie Gorry Kindergarten. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's fantastic. Were there any kids there or did they get them out? Well, I was a kid. You were a kid. Oh, how old were you? About eight. He was eight. Oh, Slim changed his life. That's why he's here tonight. And uh, what about the first album you ever bought? Actually, it wasn't. It was a birthday present, but I'll count it. It was a Jimi Hendrix smash hits. Oh, Jimi! <laughs> <laughs> Well, if they were the preliminaries, I think we just had them. Everybody take a deep breath, shake out any negative energy and prepare to do battle with these questions, both local and or general. Well done, Fran, for guessing Ian Moss. Excellent. I know you love him. She's one of my favourite band. And she did know every single word to Go River while you were singing it. It was kind of lovely and a bit stalky at the same time. So I'm just letting it know. Work as a team. But work as a team. Work as a team. Right. Here we go. What do these guitar players have in common? Kurt Cobain, Dick Dale, Albert King, Paul McCartney, Jimi Hendrix. Are they left handed? They're all left handed, correct. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Let's 
to rap a while, shall we? Who was the rapper banned from entering Australia on character grounds citing prior criminal convictions? Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg is correct. Well done. What does rapper Flavor Flav usually have hanging around his neck? Yes. Uh, an alarm clock. An alarm clock is correct. <laughs> it's enormous, isn't it? It's just really almost a bit silly, but well done. Which maverick journalist requested that Mr Tambourine Man be played at his funeral while his ashes were shot from a cannon? Hunter S Thompson. Hunter S Thompson is correct. Well done, Lulu. True or false? You know, it's understood by many that the facial contortions many guitar players make during the ecstasy of a guitar solo are the same expressions he or she makes during sex. Yes, Fran? True. It is true. Well done. <laughs> Very good girl. Of course, not all guitar slingers like to make public what pleases them in private. Which of the following guitar players are indeed facial contorters? Eric Clapton. It's all opinion. Just buzz in. Whatever you like. Yes, Fran? No. I'm afraid he is. Yes. <laughs> he does it for sure. By the way, that's not me during orgasm, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Rick Brewster from the Angels. <laughs> yeah. No! <laughs> but she tried! That's what I love! Really That's the that. spirit I'm after. What about Prince? Yes! Yes! yes. yes confirm! See, they're getting yes. the hang of it now. They're <laughs> so, yes, he's always off in some la la land, of course. <laughs> Mia Dyson. No. No, correct. correct. Excellent. We, we reckon no. It's all opinion. Who knows if it's true? <laughs> the Edge. Yes. I've got no. Oh. He just stands there the whole time. He never does another thing. Nothing here, nothing. <laughs> Was Thorpey a contorter? Yes. Absolutely correct. Well done. George Harrison? I think not. That's opinion. Very good, Brett. Ian Moss? Can <laughs> <laughs> I win? Can I win? Yes, whatever you say will be right. Yes. Yes, correct! <laughs> So now we shall be scouring the stores for any DVDs of Ian Moss just to check up. Please do. <laughs> Sing the next line and name the song and artist. Still in peaceful dreams I see the road leads back to you. If you know it, buzz in. <laughs> Thank you. Can you sing I it? I can't remember the next line. Oh, well, sing it from Still, still in peaceful peace. dreams, I see Thank the road you. leads back to you. Then it goes... Georgia. Again. Georgia. The whole night through. Thanking you! You didn't set me up, did you? No. What is the name of the song? Georgia on my mind. Who sings it? I do. You do, sure. <laughs> I'll pay that, but if someone else sang it, who would it be? Confer, tell him. No, it is. Well, the first version I ever heard was, was uh, Stevie Winwood, 17 years old and playing piano. True. Fantastic version. I would have accepted Ray Charles, though. 15 points right there. Excellent. <laughs> Brian Dougal, don't hold anything back or all that. I'll tell you what are the scores so far. It's that time of the night again, and I can tell you're as excited as I am. Million Dollar Riff. Where you guess that riff, let the riff times roll. Riff number one. Hesitation in Mossy's move. What do you think it might be? Led Zeppelin Heartbreaker. Full points, very good. Oh. Excellent. <laughs> Riff number two. <laughs> a 
And once again, fast on the buzzer. Yes, Mr Moss? Skyhook's living in the 70s. Correct. Were you there? Yes. I was, I, yeah, I was there. You were there. You were living in the 70s. Oh, that's good to hear, isn't it, every now and then? Oh, love it. OK, now, if you don't know this, there's something wrong. Are you ready? Riff number three. Gonna have what? a heart, small seizure. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. Freeze frame is what I need. What's the name of that crazy band? Jay Giles. Jay Giles yeah. band is what I need. And I'm Julia. Rona Dougal, Chippity Chop, one of the scores. Attention to the founding principles of rock quiz, edification and enlightenment. It's time for Into the Groove, the examination of one classic song and a chance for Brian to unlock the tiny cage in his mind and let his inner rock snob run free. Tonight on Into the Groove, we take a look at a groundbreaking Australian number one hit from 1969. Written by none other than Johnny Young, It's the Real Thing, by Russell Morris. The song featured phasing and sampled speeches and ended with a nuclear explosion extinguishing a children's choir. The song was actually released on a small label in America and reached number one in Chicago, Houston and New York. According to Johnny Young, the whole thing started with a shared joint and a meditation on the concept of real. Said Johnny, I wanted to say that I am the real thing, you are the real thing, we are the real thing. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Julia. And thank you, Brian. I know, it's quite a mouthful, isn't it? Now, that's the overview. Now come the questions for both teams. Hands on buzzers. Name an Australian act that has covered the song. Kylie Kylie Minogue, Minogue. yes, is correct. She did sing it. Midnight Oil did it too, apparently. What is the carbonated soft drink often associated with the song? Yep. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola's correct, Lulu, well done. Name one American city with a real thing hit number one. Houston. Houston is correct. Well done, Natalie. Very good. Which Australian movie from 2000 featured the song in its soundtrack? Yes, Fran, you know it. The it's castle. The, the other one. Oh. The dish. The dish is correct. Oh. You're on the right track. That's what I meant. The working dog folk, well done. Lastly, who wrote the song and who produced the landmark seven-minute recording, Brett? Johnny Young. Johnny Young wrote it and who produced it? Ian I Meldrum. Thought it was Ian yeah. Molly Meldrum is correct. Well done, Fran. Brian Dougal, give us some indication to the relative standings of these two teams, please. Skanky groove. I haven't felt that skanky since I went to a costume party dressed as Britney Spears. <laughs> Whoops, I did it again. Of course, that classic Stevie Wonder tune means it's time for Master Blaster, a chance for our guest musicians to strut their stuff. We'll start with Ian. I'm sorry, Mossy. And your topic? Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. See, they all love it. Are you ready? Yeah. You look ready. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What were the two songs recorded during the Sgt Pepper sessions that producer George Martin regrets leaving off the album? Oops. Uh, Strawberry Fields. Correct. Forever. And uh, Penny Lane. I shall give you full points for that, Ian Moss. Well done. <laughs> Where did John Lennon get most of the lyrics for being for the benefit of Mr Kite? 
Uh, apparently found an old uh, circus poster in, a, in an antique shop in Kent Town. In Kent Town? Oh. Very good. That's very specific. Well done. Excellent. Yes. Apparently doesn't write his own lyrics, John Lennon, just gets them off old Victorian circus posters. Now we know. What was so unusual about the string arrangement of She's Leaving Home? George Martin apparently normally did most of the string arrangements, but um, <clears throat> Paul McCartney wanted to get on with recording that song. That song, George was very busy, so he hired a freelance string arranger called Mike Leander. Absolutely correct. correct. Of course, I don't have the minutiae of George was busy. <laughs> And that it was a freelancer, but fantastic. Sorry for ad -libbing. You might get extra points for that, I don't know. What Australian band thrilled audiences with note-perfect live renditions of the entire Sgt Pepper's album weeks before it was even released here? The Twilights. Glen Shark's old band. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> well done, Ian. Full Thank points. You. And so now we turn our attention to Natalie. And your topic... The late Fela Kuti, Nigerian musician and composer, pioneer of Afrobeat music, human rights activist and political maverick. I wonder if you're ready. Yes. <laughs> Fela Kuti is associated with Afrobeat. Natalie, could you explain Afrobeat for us? Afrobeat is a combination of jazz mm. and West African high life music, also traditional African chant. 100 million points. In 1986, Fella performed in Giants Stadium in New Jersey as part of the Amnesty International Conspiracy of Hope concert. Who did he share the bill with? Bono. Correct. Carlos Santana and the Neville Brothers. The Neville Brothers is correct. Well done. <laughs> How many women did he marry in 1978? 27. That's correct. God, that's one every couple of weeks, I reckon. That's exhausting. Constant yapping. Yeah, busy. Stop it, you know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what is the name of his eldest son, who, like his father, has shown a strong commitment to social and political causes, though with very different religious views? That would be Femi Kuti. 100,000 points for Natalie. Well done. I'm very impressed with the both of you. You've studied hard and you've come here with good points, but has that changed the delicate balance of the scores? As Marvin Gaye once asked Brian Dougal, what's going on? game so let's get down to the nitty and the gritty band if you please a little ditty now I think you all agree this has been the most keenly contested edition of rock Quiz since the last episode <laughs> the hilarity the bitterness the futile recriminations the love the joy it's nearly over for another week but not quite there's still a few curly ones mooching around waiting to be asked so if you don't mind I'm going to ask them now thank you <laughs> Drifting off, just away, just thinking about the school lunches. <laughs> not that I'm not happy, it's just a lot on. Just don't faint, all right? <laughs> what character did David Bowie once play with great success on Broadway? Ma, 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 Broadway. Yes. The Elephant Man. <laughs> You're correct. The Elephant Man, very good. And what was his famous, ca famous catch cry, Brett? I'm not an animal. That's right. As the Beatles so beautifully put it all those years ago, all you need is love. Oh. 
<laughs> what were you going to say? I don't know. You didn't know, but you went for it. Put on you. Who loved, nothing to do with the Beatles, we're just talking about love, en général. Who loved Jennifer Eccles? Yeah. The Hollies. The Hollies is correct. correct. Thank you for coming back on board. Who loved his dog? Cat Stevens. Correct. Yes. Who loved rock and roll? Joan Jets. She did, correct. Who loved the modern world, the old world, the neon, the radio, Massachusetts, modern moonlight and the highway when it's late at night? Jonathan Richmond. Jonathan Richmond and his modern lovers is correct. Fill in the numbers. Living in the... 70s. 70s. Thank you, Lulu. Days a week. Seven. Eight, 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 eight. Yeah. Sorry. You, I mean, you know, you're eight. right. You're Please. absolutely right. There eight. are only seven days a week. Of course there are only Sorry. seven days a week. But eight. lyrically, in a Beatles sense, eight. it was eight. But I you meant... heard days a week, seven. <laughs> so you're right, and yet you're wrong. <laughs> Nervous breakdown. 19. Five, 19. Four, three, uh, two, one. <laughs> It's a shame there has to be a loser and a winner, but without some sort of scoring system, your roles would largely be superfluous. So, earn your keep. Who won and by how much? <laughs> so close yet so far. Congratulations, many thanks to all our players tonight and well done, Mossy's team right there. And to you at home, is that a tear? Don't cry, not now. We've been through too much together. Don't think of this as the end of the show. Think of it as the beginning of you visiting us on our website. And remember, as British singer Desiree sang, I don't want to see a ghost. It's the sight I fear the most. I'd rather have a piece of toast. <laughs> Okay, to take us out tonight, Ian and Natalie are going to leave us with a Sam Cooke song, a true civil rights anthem, Change is Gonna Come. Good night, everyone. Like that river I've been running ever since. It's been a long, long time coming, and I know change is gonna come. Oh, yes, it be. It's been too. Beyond the sky It's been long yeah. Long time coming But I know oh, oh, A change gonna come Hey, yes it is Then I go to my brother. Mm. I said, brother, help me please. But it winds up knocking me.
I think I'm able to carry on. It's been a long, long time coming, and I'm that you ever went to? Well, it was ACDC with yeah. Skyhooks and Sherbet oh. at Festival Hall. At Festival Hall, no less. Oh. Mm. That, was a, that was a bit more than just a tennis <laughs> clap out there, Fran. They're pretty impressed. And Brett, here you are, thorn amongst the roses. Now, Brett, uh, what was the first concert you ever went to? I think I can out-dag everyone with Chad Morgan and Slim Dusty at the Crook. <laughs> Crookshank Oval in Kalgoorlie. <laughs> Slim Dusty, legend. That's magnificent. He I was there for Chad, not Slim. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's honest. Our contestants will only take us so far for a fully functioning, well-rounded team. We require an injection of expertise in the form of the singers waiting backstage at this very moment. Let's bring them out. Orchestra, the musical preamble, please. it be now? I was born in the United States to a Western Samoan mother and Native American Mexican father and moved to Melbourne when I was one. My heritage is a great influence on my music and I regularly mention artists like Fela Kuti, Janis Joplin and Ernest Wranglin as inspirations. I've been referred to as Australia's new queen of roots music but I'll leave the royal name checks for my kingly band, a vibrant colourful seven to nine piece. We're relative newcomers, forming in Byron Bay in 2003 and moving south in 2004. We got our big break when our debut single, Water, featured on Triple J's Home and Hosed LP. Hello. Um, Natalie Papa. Well done, you! Please make her very welcome, Natalie Papa! Sorry, I'm the human race is diminishing glory. Do you think? 
decisions When we people speak up, they don't listen So don't you dare go and die for the system I'm telling you that's wrong So come and be open and come and get wise You think they'll protect you, but don't realize War that they make only takes away life, yeah They sell you their stories, they tell you what's right they promise you glory if you go and fight But don't send their own kids to war in the night, when I hooked up with a wild Scotsman from Elizabeth, an infamous working-class suburb of Adelaide. We wanted to be as big as the Rolling Stones, and we certainly gathered no moss, as we became one of the hardest-working and most loved live acts in Australia. Is it Ian Moss? Please make him very welcome. From Paul Chisel. Ian Moss. Good evening. Hi. Well, well, well. Oh, listen loud to the wind, babe. And listen loud to the rain. You know, I feel that water. I can feel that water licking at my feet again. And I don't want to see this town no more Wasting my days on a factory floor First thing you know I'll be back in Bow River It's the first thing you know I'll be back in Bow River again Yeah
Think I'm able to carry on. It's been a long, long time coming, and I'm It's that time of the night again, and I can tell you're as excited as I am. Million Dollar Riff. Where you guess that riff, let the riff times roll. Riff number one. Hesitation in Mossy's move. What do you think it might be? Led Zeppelin Heartbreaker. Full points, very good. Oh. Excellent. <laughs> Riff number two. <laughs> and once again, fast on the buzzer. Yes, Mr. Moss. Skyhooks living in the 70s. Correct. Were you there? Yes. I was, I was, yeah, I was there. You were there. You were living in the 70s. Oh, that's good to hear, isn't it, every now and then? Oh, love it. OK, now, if you don't know this, there's something wrong. Are you ready? Riff number three. Oh, I was just going to have what? a heart small seizure. Freeze frame. Freeze frame me. Freeze frame is what I need. What's the name of that crazy band? Jay Giles. Jay Giles yeah. band is what I'm And I'm Julia. Rona Dougal, Chippity Chop, one of the scores. Attention to the founding principles of rock quiz, edification and enlightenment. It's time for Into the Groove, the examination of one classic song and a chance for Brian to unlock the tiny cage in his mind and let his inner rock snob run free. Tonight on Into the Groove, we take a look at a groundbreaking Australian number one hit from 1969. Written by none other than Johnny Young, It's the Real Thing, by Russell Morris. Situation, something's brewing. They'll keep trying to tell us we're wrong, but we keep believing strong. So may we wake up from this slumber like the spell we've been living under. Cause this battle's about to get hotter. I feel it in my heart, yeah. The next time you're waiting for something to change, instead of just sitting and wasting the day, struggle it breathe now, call that your name, E. Hey, uh, it starts to betray you and thinking of wonder. There's no shame greater than what we have done. Every was we've done the burgundy
Just is no denying May the world we live in now Carry me today See our colors keep on flying Yeah, but come make your own man And use your own eyes to see what they're doing And know it ain't right There ain't nothing wrong with us wanting to fight Yeah, come on There is a resistance that goes every day We're following that Gonna give up the freedom, gonna stay home. Let the riff times roll. Riff number one. There was not a moment's hesitation in Mossy's move. What do you think it might be? Led Zeppelin Heartbreaker. Very good, excellent. <laughs> Riff number two. <laughs> and once again, fast on the buzzer. Yes, Mr. Moss. Skyhooks living in the 70s. Correct. Were you there? <laughs> I was, I was, yeah, I was there. You were there. You were living in the 70s. Oh, that's good to hear, isn't it, every now and then? Oh, love it. OK, now, if you don't know this, there's something wrong. Are you ready? Riff number three. Oh, I was just going to have what? a heart, small seizure. Freeze frame. Freeze frame freeze frame is what I need. What's the name of that crazy band? Jay Giles. Jay Giles yeah. band is what and I need. And Julia. Rona Dougal, Chippity Chop, what a disguise. Attention to the founding principles of rock quiz, edification and enlightenment. It's time for Into the Groove, the examination of one classic song and a chance for Brian to unlock the tiny cage in his mind and let his inner rock snob run free. Tonight on Into the Groove, we take a look at a groundbreaking Australian number one hit from 1969. Written by none other than Johnny Young, It's the Real Thing, by Russell Morris. The song featured phasing and sampled speeches and ended with a nuclear explosion extinguishing a children's choir. The song was actually released on a small label in America and reached number one in Chicago, Houston and New York. According to Johnny Young, the whole thing started with a shared joint and a meditation on the concept of real. 
said, Johnny, I wanted to say that I am the real thing, you are the real thing, we are the real thing. The love, the joy. It's nearly over for another week, but not quite. There's still a few curly ones mooching around, waiting to be asked, so if you don't mind, I'm going to ask them. Now. Thank you. <laughs> drifting off, just away. Just. <laughs> thinking about the school lunches. <laughs> not that I'm not happy, there's just a lot on. Just don't faint, all right? <laughs> what character did David Bowie once play with great success on Broadway? Ma 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 Broadway. Yes. The Elephant Man. <laughs> You're correct. The Elephant Man, very good. And what was his famous, ca famous catch cry, Brett? I'm not an animal. That's right. As the Beatles so beautifully put it all those years ago, all you need is love. Oh. <laughs> what were you going to say? I don't know. You didn't know, but you went for it. Put on you. Who loved, nothing to do with the Beatles, we're just talking about love, en général. Who loved Jennifer Eccles? Yeah. The Hollies. The Hollies is correct. correct. Thank you for coming back on board. Who loved his dog? Cat Stevens. Correct. Yes. Who loved rock and roll? Joan Jens. She did, correct. Who loved the modern world, the old world, the neon, the radio, Massachusetts, modern moonlight and the highway when it's late at night? Jonathan Richmond. Jonathan Richmond and his modern lovers is correct. Fill in the numbers. Living in the... 70s. 70s. Thank you, Lulu. Days a week. Seven. Eight, 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 eight. Yeah. Sorry. You, I mean, you know, you're eight. right. You're eight. absolutely right. There eight. are only seven days a week. Eight. Of course there are only Sorry. seven days a week. But eight. lyrically, in a Beatles sense, eight. it was eight. But I you mean... heard days a week, seven. <laughs> so you're right, and yet you're wrong. <laughs> Nervous breakdown. Nineteen. Five, Nineteen. Four, three, uh, two, one. <laughs> It's a shame there has to be a loser and a winner, but without some sort of scoring system, your roles would largely be superfluous. So, earn your keep. Who won and by how much? So close, yet so far. Congratulations, many thanks to all our players tonight and well done, Mossy's team right there. And to you at home, is that a tear? Don't cry, not now. We've been through too much together. Don't think of this as the end of the producer George Martin regrets leaving off the album. Oops. Uh, Strawberry Fields. Correct. Forever. And uh, Penny Lane. I shall give you full points for that, Ian Moss. Well done. <laughs> um, where did John Lennon get most of the lyrics? for being for the benefit of Mr. Kite. I uh, apparently found an old uh, circus poster in, a, in an antique shop in Kent Town. In Kent Town? Oh. Very good. That's very specific. Well done. Excellent. Yes. Apparently he doesn't write his own lyrics, John Lennon, just gets them off old Victorian circus posters. Now we know. What was so unusual about the string arrangement of She's Leaving Home? George Martin apparently normally did most of the string arrangements, but... Um, <clears throat> Paul McCartney wanted to get on with recording that song. That song, George is very busy, so he hired a freelance string arranger called Mike Leander. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. <laughs> of course, I don't have the minutiae of George was busy <laughs> and that it was a freelancer, but fantastic. Sorry for ad-libbing. You might get extra points for that, I don't okay. know. What Australian band thrilled audiences with note-perfect live renditions of the entire Sgt Pepper's album weeks before it was even released here? The Twilights. Glenn Shark's old band. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> well done, Ian. Full Thank points. You. And so now we turn our attention to Natalie. And your topic, the late Fela Kuti, Nigerian musician and composer pioneer of Afrobeat music, human rights activist and political maverick. I wonder if you're ready. Yes. <laughs> Fela Kuti is associated with Afrobeat. Natalie, could you explain Afrobeat for us? 
Afrobeat is a combination of jazz mm. and West African high life music, also traditional African chant. 100 million points. In 1986, Fella performed in Giants Stadium in New Jersey as part of the Amnesty International Conspiracy of Hope concert. Who did he share the bill with? Bono. Correct. Carlos Santana and the Neville Brothers. The Neville Brothers is correct. Well done. <laughs> How many women did he marry in 1978? 27. <laughs> that's correct. God, that's one every couple of weeks, I reckon. That's exhausting. Constant yapping. Yeah, busy. Stop it, you know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> What is the name of his eldest son who, like his father, has shown a strong commitment to social and political causes, though with very different religious views? That would be... You didn't set me up, did you? No. What is the name of the song? Georgia On My Mind. Who sings it? I do. You do, sure. <laughs> I'll pay that, but if someone else sang it, who would it be? Confer, tell him. No, what is good. Well, the first version I ever heard was, was uh, Stevie Winwood, 17 years old and playing piano. True. Fantastic version. I would have accepted Ray Charles, though. 15 points right there. Excellent. <laughs> Brian Dougal, don't hold anything back or all that. I'll tell you what are the scores so far. It's that time of the night again, and I can tell you're as excited as I am. A million dollar riff. Where you guess that riff, let the riff times roll. Riff number one. <laughs> Hesitation in Mossy's move. What do you think it might be? Led Zeppelin Heartbreaker. Full points, very good. Oh, Excellent. Yeah. Riff number two. <laughs> and once again, fast on the buzzer. Yes, Mr. Moss. Skyhooks living in the 70s. Correct. Were you there? I was, I was, yeah, I was there. You were there. You were living in the 70s. Oh, that's good to hear, isn't it, every now and then? Oh, love it. OK, now, if you don't know this, there's something wrong. Are you ready? Riff number three. <laughs> Freeze frame. Freeze framey, freeze frame is what I need. What's the name of that crazy band? Jay Giles. Jay Giles yeah. band is what I need. And I'm Julia. Rona Dougal, Chippity Chop, what are the scores? Director, <laughs> did David Bowie once play with great success on Broadway? Ma, 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 Broadway. Yes. The Elephant Man. <laughs> You're correct. The Elephant Man, very good. And what was his famous, ca famous catch cry, Brett? I'm not an animal. That's right. As the Beatles so beautifully put it all those years ago, all you need is love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? I don't know. You didn't know, but you went for it. Put on you. Who loved, nothing to do with the Beatles, we're just talking about love, en général. Who loved Jennifer Eccles? Yeah. The Hollies. The Hollies is correct. correct. Thank you for coming back on board. Who loved his dog? Cat Stevens. Correct. Yes. Who loved rock and roll? 
Joan Jens. She did, correct. Who loved the modern world, the old world, the neon, the radio, Massachusetts, modern moonlight and the highway when it's late at night? Jonathan Richmond. Jonathan Richmond and his modern lovers is correct. Fill in the numbers. Living in the... 70s. 70s. Thank you, Lulu. Days a week. Seven. Eight. 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 Yeah. Sorry. You, eight. I eight. mean, you know, you're eight. right. Please. You're absolutely right. There eight. are only seven days a week. Eight. Of course there are only Sorry. seven days a week. But eight. lyrically, in a Beatles sense, eight. it was eight. But I you mean... heard days a week, seven. <laughs> so you're right, and yet you're wrong. <laughs> Nervous breakdown. Nineteen. Five, Nineteen. Four, three, uh, two, one. <laughs> It's a shame there has to be a loser and a winner, but without some sort of scoring system, your roles would largely be superfluous. So, earn your keep. Who won and by how much? So close, yet so far. Congratulations, many thanks to all our players tonight and well done, Mossy's team right there. And to you at home, is that a tear? Don't cry, not now. We've been through too much together. Don't think of this as the end of the show. Think of it as the beginning of you visiting us on our website. And remember, as British singer Desiree sang, I don't want to see a ghost. It's the sight I fear the most. I'd rather have a piece of toast. <laughs> Okay, to take us out tonight, Ian and Natalie are going to leave us with a Sam Cooke song, a true civil rights anthem. Change is going to come. Good night, everyone.